It's beautiful. Got to be one of the most attractive batteries I've seen. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but geez, you see some ugly contraptions. Super happy with that. Spring-loaded handles on the side. A Inspire Trust. Another two nice big handles along the bottom there and another one on the other side. Taking a look at the bottom side, in between the two handles, we've got the four lugs, positive and negative. We've got the power button over there that turns the entire unit on and off. On the left-hand side here, we've got the circuit breaker. It's 125 amp. We've got the on off little indicator light here. So when we turn it on, we can see it turns on. Then we've got a reset switch here. So if you want to reset the BMS, you can just press that and turn it off. And here we have the ADS that stands for battery address selector. So that allows you to have multiple batteries in a row. And then within the software, which I'll show you in a second, you can differentiate between the, between the actual units themselves, the batteries. To the right of that, we've got the DCT and then it's two dry loop contacts. And then we've got the RS485 communication and CAN bus. We've got the RS323, and that is the cable that they've provided. It plugs in there and goes over to the software on the computer. And then on this side, we've got the RS485 ports. So they use the RJ45 cable that we got. And if you've got multiple units, you daisy chain all of the inverters together so the BMSs talk and they all work as one rather than separate units. To configure up the RS323 cable and the blue USB cable there, we go head over to the OP Solar Battery website. We click on Support Center and click on Download Center. And there we can get the drivers for the USB and download the software. Once you've downloaded the software, be sure to turn your inverter on. Inverter comes on and then we can start reading the information on the screen. I've already downloaded and installed it. It was plug and play. I plugged the cable in and away it went. Now on the first screen, real-time monitoring, you can see the battery voltage. You can see all the other information that would be relevant to any battery. You can see the high and the low. We can see the individual cell readings here. Also have a little bit more system status information there. Over on multi-monitoring, that is for multiple batteries. Under memory information, we can actually hit read record. We click that. It requests information from the inverter and pulls a whole heap of the information. So this is after I've done the test. Uh, capacity full, 105 amp hours. Uh, so you can see we actually took no more data. There we go. We took out about 105 amp hours out of the battery when we did our last test with 0% remaining. We go to the next parameter settings. Now, this is really cool. Fortunately, I don't own an Android phone. So we can go read all, and this pulls all the information from the inverter, and you can change everything accordingly. And then under system configuration, we can just do a few more things, cell numbering, uh, charge current settings. We can change things, or we can actually hit read. Oops charge current so we can actually change that which is great gap charge settings not sure what that is design capacity remaining capacity full capacity so that'll refer back to uh this this setting around about here full capacity and then you can change the language there with my load all hooked up now i've just got the two silicon cables there they are 8 awg 200 degree c so more than capable of handling that load